Delegate Selection and the Law Through the Years, The What and Why. Matthew Jensen, April through June 2023. I've had to go down through a few different rabbit holes, as it were, in uh, researching the topic of um, Idaho Code and Delegate Selection to uh, state political party conventions. And... Uh, the things and the things and the how of which that is prescribed is uh, changed over the years, and um, this more or less starts in the 1960s. Uh, massive change is made in 1970. Further revision is made in the regular session of the uh, 1971 legislature. Uh, there's some uh, things that happen in or around that time, and then a a, uh, an extraordinary session is called and some things happen there and there's uh, been some things that have happened in the intervening time since and it kind of comes to the situation that where we are now now the mid to late 60s it's, um, it's more or less in reference to uh, the social issues of the day um, a lot of um, change in both uh, attitude and culture were such that uh, it was no longer okay for um, certain people to be discriminated against, you know, you, you know, especially minorities and women and things of that nature, you know, equal rights and uh, suffrage, etc., the issues of the day. And not only that, but just simply issues leading up to the 60s as well also had some play in this. But um, basically... Um, by the end of the 60s, uh, Idaho had pretty much identified that, yes, there are a bunch of changes that need to happen to the electoral code. And um, that's where we get into the 1970 legislative session of the Idaho legislature. It was Hi House Bill 555, interesting timing name, in uh, 1970, where um, the reform largely happened i mean they weren't just starting to think of it in 1970 it's just this is where a lot of the stuff finally got around to being done um a lot of uh, most if not all of the electoral code things having to do with elections was just simply taken out wholesale repealed and then what we largely have mostly today was put in i mean most of the electoral code and the laws enacted in this bill uh, to this day either survive wholesale are modified only very slightly or are very recognizable in both text and intent except for one thing that we're going to be getting here and focusing on here in just a sec and it is interesting that that little thing you know to note it right here that delegate selection law later designated as Idaho Code 34507, directly prescribes certain numbers of delegates to legislative districts and counties, the larger number of which were supposed to be given to legislative districts. Now, um, I'm not aware of exactly how it happened. I, I, I did stare at the rules of this once, but um, I don't know how it works in the Democrat or other parties that operate in this state. But uh, the way that it works is in um, Idaho now is that uh, legislative districts are given three delegates and then counties are given three plus a number based on how many thousands of uh, registered um, party members that there are in the state. That's, um, that's largely how it works now. And we'll get to the differences here in a moment. Now, the relevant, now there's the next legislative, regular le legislative session where things were amended a little more, and we'll get to it, but uh, the relevant part of the law, now designated as 3457, the session laws are unclear as to what it was before, is amended uh, in uh, Senate Bill 1078 to include, to include text that forces all political parties not just one or another, but all political parties to include delegate blocks. That's literally the word that's used in there. Sometimes that's that sometimes B L O C that block is referred 
has a very negative con connotation to it, but it kind of doesn't here, but they, it's literally the word that they used. Uh, it must be, uh, a block of them must be full-time students from certain learning institutions in the state, and it even specified that these students must be able to vote on the roll call. Don't know what issue that they're solving with that particular part of it, but the law literally did say that they have to be able to vote on the roll call of whatever convention. And uh, the um, reasons for prescribing these particular voting blocks are unclear, but it, there are a few uh, different um, news articles of the time, especially in the Idaho Statements, that heavily imply some uh, Democrat sentiments of the time uh, you know, were largely in play for that. Both the Idaho House and the Idaho Senate uh, then agreed to adjourn uh, sine die at uh, March 20, 1971. This was a Saturday at 5.30 p.m., no less. The reasons why the session dragged out are a little bit unclear, but they seem to be unrelated to Senate Bill 1078. Now, it's a little bit muddled on exactly the timing of this. So it's not clear that the governor's proclamation happened after the adjournment or not, but the sources do conflict, and, but either the day before, a handful of hours before, or a few hours after adjournment sine die of the 1971 regular session, Governor Andrus issues a proclamation authorizing an extraordinary session of the Idaho legislature. Now, there were some emergency items that he was um, concerned about initially. There were three of them, but these were apparently requiring some rather urgent and emergency attention. The third item of which, and if you can go look this up, it's in the Session Laws of 71. The third item was a, um, a need to reform and clarify delegate selection and other electoral law to one man, one vote principles. Now this is interesting in the context of today in 2023, but back then they were even concerned about this very kind of thing where a person is supposed to have just as much voting power as the next person. Governor Andrus also put some other, you know, amended this and put some other things in this, but they largely seem to be unrelated to um, electoral issues. So here, so at noon, the following Monday, March 22nd, 1971, the Idaho legislature uh, reconvenes. House Bill 2. Now, now, this is an extraordinary session, but it is interesting that only the second bill of at least a handful, and this, and this gets covered specifically, the part about delegate selection uh, gets immediately, pretty much immediately addressed. Um, and House Bill 2 completely repeals 34507 and then puts in a new 34507. Now, this is historically different than just simply amending the law to whatever we need it to be. No, they needed to be sure that nothing from the uh, old law could be applied, in, you know, afterwards. It was actually pretty important to them. And this is right after the very same people had passed Senate Bill 1078. So, and it, 34507 got replaced with literally the law that we have today. There has not been any amending to it since. It literally says, and I will read it directly here, 34507, selection of delegates to the state convention. The delegates to the state convention of each political party shall be selected in the manner prescribed by rules and regulations promulgated and adopted by the state's central committee. And then it tells you where to find it in the session laws there. <laughs> but, that's but that's literally what we have now, and that happened in the extraordinary session. Now... The new law literally removed, as I was just saying, 
Now this is why we have Article 7, Section 3 of the Delegate Selection Rules. It reads as follows, and it's it has a longer title in here, and I just refer to it as Delegate Selection Rules sometimes, but here. The rules for selection of delegates to Republican National Convention and the Republican State Convention can only be amended or suspended by the Idaho Republican State Central Committee. So, and this was a direct consequence of this. It was apparently um, the very next year with uh, the uh, f with the first female uh, chairman of the party, Marge Minor, heading up a committee to write pretty much that. And that was a consequence. Now, there have been intervening years since, obviously. It's been a long time, since 1971. The Idaho legislature has not seen fit to change Idaho Code 34507, nor has there been any substantive or serious efforts from voters, PACs, lobbies, or other interested groups to get the legislative branch to change it. So, the legislature itself has not has not been motivated to it, and nobody else has been wanting them to want to motivate it. And so that in all of the years since, and you would have think there would have been at least something by now because it's just how many years, but apparently not. Now, switch over to the judicial branch because they have some interest in this manner sometimes, but the judicial branch has not wanted to get involved either and has yet to be presented with a reason to change their mind. Now, courts do not generally do something, you know, start something on their own. They, you know, they I think they call it acting sua sponte or something. Like, so one of those Latin phrases. But, um, general, but uh, they have not been presented with a reason. And it's difficult to find anything that would have been presented as a reason. Uh, but, and and uh, the reason why it's not really, none of that is really included in here is because I don't have access to Westlaw. But uh, what's more likely going on here is that uh, the, um, the reason why they don't want to uh, do anything is because uh, of where the law originally comes from. And the, one of the things that was feeding into the Extraordinary Session that where we get 34507 is statements made by the AG of the time. Is uh, He was uh, G uh, Attorney General W. Anthony Park, in which he referenced um, a lot of very similar things going on in nearby states, and the and uh, laws otherwise were more or less unconstitutional, so that's literally how, w where we needed to stop it was just let the parties take care of it. And so, you know, th that's what's going on with that. Now, there were a lot of years, and then uh, the judicial branch kind of got close, but it wasn't even in the state courts. It was in the uh, federal court. With Idaho Republican Party v. Asursa, I think that case started in something like 2008, but uh, near the end in 2011... Involvement or uh, intervention from the judicial branch became less likely in 2011 by um, the end of the case uh, in U.S. District Court. Uh, in a court document from March 2011, uh, the chief, ju chief U.S. District Judge Windmill made several statements on top of finding related law unconstitutional in which if true, pretty much preclude the courts from ruling any differently from what 34507 already is. Read, have the parties take care of it. Anything more restrictive will have to pass a constitutional, st a constitutional test, especially with the 1st and 14th Amendments, because those have to do with uh, e you know, equal protection, on the, well, equal application of the law, and also uh, the right to associate with who you want. And delegate selection definitely rubs up against that particular um, issue. As well as, uh, you know, on top of that, but they will need a compelling state interest to do anything, much less what, you know, what uh, somebody would presumably want in changing the law. Now, if they don't want to do anything, then what is already, already been done 
Have you ever tried to get a court to do something that it doesn't even want to do in the first place? Think about that one. Now, on to the next slide. Uh, inside the party, after the uh, 1971 extraordinary legislative session, the Republican Party in Idaho has had a convention in even number of years and um, has delegate selection rules in which the state central committee and conventions themselves have largely been following and have at been at times adamant that they be followed. There's uh, been a fight or two about them, absolutely. Now, various state party resolutions of measures have either asserted or relied upon the party being able to handle such matters themselves. And so everyone pretty much agrees, both the people, well, the people, the courts, and the legislature are all agreeing the people are taking care of this themselves. And then this, um, this issue kind of, kind of comes up again, at least brushes past it, where in, uh, in 2014, because delegate selection rules were not being followed, Uproar from the more conservative factions of the party at, that con at the convention in Moscow, Idaho, basically stopped it. Now, that is a whole nother side subject to itself, but the people basically stopped the convention because those very rules that the courts and legislature say uh, the state party can take care of themselves, they gotta, they gotta follow them. So... This last part of this slide was written before I went to Chalice, so it's a little bit weird now. But uh, even in the summer of 2023 meeting, there was a popular resolution, and yes, it did pass, about the party's inherent right to make their own nominations and, and uh, asserting the right to freely associate. Very, very ingrained uh, issues in delegate selection. If you believe the message behind ranked choice voting even, then you must also be against the courts or lawmakers getting any more involved than they, than they are at this point, because that's roughly the same issue anyway. So, in conclusion, through all of this, the history and legislative intent behind current delegate selection law are known. It is both legal and expected that political parties in the gem state will have procedures and requirements for delegate selection and uh, it is any possible intervention from the government is unlikely and getting them to intervene getting them to intervene is both folly and a money pit and through all of that we know that the Idaho Republican Party nor any of its constituent county or legislative district committees cannot be expected to proceed otherwise and that's where we're getting at here is well the party makes and follows the, those rules and that is how it will be insisted upon being done and that's where we are thank you